when the time comes. Unhappy Careful people now, are. that's a trap. Sloppy. Unreliable. Maybe that's why I ain't landed a mark in a while. I'm unhappy. Or maybe I'm just horny. Killed him slow. Preserves the flavor. I do not care. You must be curious. He was like you. Imagine all those memories. I have nothing to say to you. You sure about that? I am sure. You want to end up like him, I guess. Or maybe you can see how this ends. I do not see this, but I do see. Guide. I see that savagery does not win. Wouldn't you like to believe that? Him. Are you his friend? That man. The bad man. He likes to hurt people. He hurt me real bad. Killed him slow. Preserves the flavor. I do not care. You must be curious. He was like you. Imagine all those memories. The bad man hurt me. I have nothing to say to you. You 
you sure about that? I am sure. Sabeel grabs you by the arm, her nails embedding themselves into your flesh. That's him. That's Roost. The man who abducted me and sold me to the Master. This is it. He knows where the Master is. My thanks. Sabeel walks up to Roost, a massive man who's looming over a small elf, his hair a tangle of matted knots. Scars upon scars cross every inch of visible flesh, from his hands to his gnarled face. Roost, Anlon, I've come to ask you a question. His smile is nauseating. You'll have to give me a kiss first. Lots a tongue, too. He laughs, the sound of a hiccuping demon choking on raw offal. How vile and petty a thing you are. Shut up. It's her I'm talking to. Sabeel, I was wondering when I'd see you again. Knew the time would come after you broke Daddy's leash. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Been wondering when the master's little pet would pick up my scent. I know. She winks at him. Let's try that again, shall we? Her casual dismissal of his insults seemed to unsettle him somewhat. Uncertainty sours his face. How about we just cut to the chase? You are searching for your master. I know where he is. Them's the cards we're holding, and I've got all the aces up my sleeve. A flash of the needle. With lightning speed, Sabeel spears his hand. He howls with pain. Strange. I see no cards whatsoever. The master. Where is he? Variety is the spice of torture. She twists the needle, making him squirm and scream. On the island! He's on the island with no name! Good boy. She removes the needle. Roost suckles his wound with thick, slurping noises. Where is the island? Tell me. Oh, I'll do you one better. I'll take you there. I'm going to beat you like I did before. I'm going to bleed and bind you and what's left of you. No more than a battered bit of meat. I'm going to deliver to the master all over again. He'll be so glad to have his puppy back, even if she'll have lost some of her luster.
He's gone. I guess this means I can leave. 
I hope the next place is better. This was a bad place. Bye, and thanks. I know you come for me again. I know you do. I know I only have to wait. Do we return now? To the others? My people wait for me nearby. Yes. Yes, thank you. I see you so clearly. I see the goodness in you. Let's go! Speak. The stag's head watches over the room, its black eyes wide and unblinking. This again? She smirks quite joylessly. You heard the way he spoke to me, didn't you? I don't think I'll lose any sleep over his violent demise. Roost. He was wickedness come to life. In his mind, we were nothing but things that squeal delightfully when tortured and ravished. She looks at you intently, with searching, questioning eyes. Does such a creature deserve anything less than death? Indeed. The names on my left arm, several, I killed with pleasure. You saw what I did with Stingtail. You saw it made me feel good. You read the ecstasy in my eyes when I made Roost scream. I ask again, does a creature like me deserve anything less than death? No innocence, not any more. But in their name, so many guilty ones. She holds up her needle and eyes it with the same searching, questioning look she gave you. Beyond the blood hides nothing but a desire to be happy. I can only hope that is not too terrible a crime. We have to find the masters of the source, don't we? 
Seems like all my life was about masters. The child smiles a ghostly gap-toothed grin and waves goodbye. The spirit's chest heaves in short, hard bursts. Its face is pinched into a tight sneer, fists balled up at its sides. It falls to its knees and grabs its matted hair in two fists, then rips. The spectral mats break away and reappear. Shove your questions. Swallow nails, you. Go, go. He catches a string of spittle with the back of his hand and wipes it away as a malevolent grin spreads over his face. God did. Do us all a favor and go die. Does it matter? They won't stop. Not till they're all dead. You can be sure of that. They ain't what you think. They'll do anything to survive. You'll get what's coming to you. The good guy. Everyone's their own good guy. He scratches at his scarred face with spectral nails, digging deep grooves that instantly vanish. No. No, no! You are running, running, running through a barren landscape. Brambles and weeds scratch at your ankles. Your heart is pumping acid, but you can't stop. Something catches you around the chest and you fall. The rough ground scrapes burns into the flesh of your bare arms, your knees, your face, you as you skid to a stop. Footsteps approach. That's the Scion, a rough voice calls. Kill him. The Divine Order? What the devil? The contract seems to predate Alexander's ascension, too. You are a young elf. Very young. Still, the memories of Ian's dance inside you. You watch them like a play behind your eyelids. You are asleep in your family home when Roost's people steal in like a plague. A hand over your mouth, a hurried journey through the forests, you won't tell Roost how to find the others. The end comes quick. They tried to hide you. They put you in a cellar. They put you in a cave. They put you in the hills. They put you in a pit. In the end, Roost found you anyway. He tried to find your memories by drilling a hole in your skull. It didn't work, but you were finally free.
The surface of the mirror ripples with a sickly haze. As you gaze into its surface, the haze forms shapes, and the shapes jerk into a figure. You see the outline of a skull, perhaps once an elf, though the flesh is all but rotted from his bones. What remains is the flat, dull color of sick. Behind him march ornately clad black ring. The picture flickers, fades, then returns in full relief. Beneath the din of the marching soldiers, or perhaps alongside it, a voice snags in your mind, like a fishhook in an open eye. It makes a demand. Tell it if you killed another Godwoken. The image strains and flickers again. Each time it comes into focus, a dull ache squeezes your head like a vice, tighter, tighter, unbearably tight. The image flickers and fades to a hazy sheen once more, and the pressure vanishes. Freedom. It is good to walk where... The haze swirls and shim... He scratches at his scarred face. No. have a sister named Clo, but Clo tried to sneak out the back door and now Clo is no more.
The whiff of chemistry assails you, but this spirit is not unhappy. Whatever was keeping him here has now lost its power. He's ready to depart. He fades away, gone forever to the Hall of Echoes. The spirit of a young woman stares in blissful devotion at the lone wolf alchemist.
The crazed lone wolf spirit screams and does not stop. He returns to himself. The screaming stops. Both eyes settle upon you at last. He looks tired. He looks haunted. But I've done such terrible things. He takes this in. A single ghostly tear trickles down his face. He raises a hand in salute and disappears. Speak. If Hardwin were to receive her head, it would make his day. I'll leave that with you. He raises a hand in salute, then vanishes into the ether.
Tunnel. Und Rad einmal. Das wäre ich tun.
The man who killed the spirit now lies dead, and he knows it. Claim your free in knowledge. He holds out his hand, index finger forward. A spark crackles between you. Visions flash before your eyes, you using the air to cow your foes, or mastering water to leave them cold and helpless, or watching them fall as the earth moves beneath you. Choose. He touches the tip of his finger to yours. Your mind opens, and your understanding of the earth expands. He smiles. Use it well. He dips his head in thanks, raises his index finger to his temple to say goodbye, then vanishes into the ether. A ghostly aura shrouds the log, along with a penetrating icy cold. Bitter cold shoots up your fingertips, through your arm, shoulder, neck, and into your brain. Your whole body contracts with the aching freeze, and a voice sounds inside of you. See what I see. Feel what I feel. Look down. Where your feet should be, you see great gnarled roots disappearing to a mossy forest floor. As this log once was, you are an ancestor tree. As you examine yourself, you see the top of a small elven child's head as she approaches. She wraps her arms around you and rests her head against your great trunk. You pass her a memory. Once, you were her father. You pass her the softness you remember of her chubby cheeks. You pass her the warmth between you when you curled back to back to sleep. A tear trickles from the child's eye and onto your bark. She whispers that she loves you. She says she will come back tomorrow. You see? The child departs, and night falls. You hear voices and the dull thud of axes. A human approaches you and pats your trunk. He raises his axe and... You see? You lie in pieces on the forest floor. Rough hands toss you into a cart and haul you away. You see? You see what he does to me. You see, he takes me from my life. You see, he cuts me into parts. You make him pay. <sighs> his bones lie buried in our sacred soil, but his spirit, his spirit, his spirit remains. Find him. Take from him what he takes from me. I show you where. Find him. I find peace then. I find peace when he is gone.